people. No, yeah. Oh, 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 Oh, no, the other right. way? Back, back <laughs> forward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it just looks good like enough. a blob. Good enough. Good enough. I think he's digging off. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Welcome to the Boston uh, post E3. Um, Cliff is uh, with us in spirit and in paper. <laughs> uh, behind the mask is the one and only Chris <laughs> Milky. <laughs> Um, you know he's uh, been the technical dude on the on the show for promoted for many 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 months, and finally he's on the show to give his opinions about stuff, which is great. Oh shit! Oh, tons of opinions. Mm-hmm. Tell you. So yeah, we've got a, a very uh, fast show hey, look, today. I'm, I'm in the wrong seat. Yeah, you. Are. Oh, oh, you are. Switch All right, whatever. It's fine. Switch All right, room. So don't get it mixed up. Yeah, everybody, everybody in the chat is like, oh, on, finally on the other side, Chris. There it is. There you go. We went up like six people, seven look, people. See, I, look, all yeah, my, my everybody came in to see Milky. Oh. Now they're going to go follow Tramel. Yeah, like, and, and, and everybody's yeah. going to leave in a second. So yeah, but we, want to, we want you guys to stay in here. We're going to give our impressions about E3. Like, It's kind of interesting seeing what the studio side of things likes from E3. Um, so yeah, we're going to talk to people from across the studio about what they thought was great at E3 what they maybe didn't think was so good. Um, take a tour of the upstairs. Tramel, you're going to give us a tour. Oh, that's finally here? Yeah. I mean, Sweet. Yeah, it's, it's wow. like seven minutes long, so we're going to walk through the upstairs space and check that out. Um, I have Sweet. I recorded some videos at E3. It's nothing super crazy or super funny. It's just kind of some stuff that happened at E3 because I think it's interesting to see, you know, on the ground floor. Uh, and that's pretty much it. And take your questions. So let's just go right into it, yep. guys. All right, we got a video. Let's do it. Well, so okay, we got we got bull jazz. So I think Chris, this is what you wanted to bring to the table. A couple things you wanted oh, okay. to discuss. Um, so probably some of the biggest things uh, from the press conference were uh, across the board from Sony Microsoft were the Shinmu Three Kickstarter, uh, Last Guardian is finally finally come, and Xbox One backwards compatibility. So let's just start with the Last Guardian. You, you, this must be last. This it's is the last. <laughs> well, uh, so, so, uh, so for so long, this was like dropped off the face of the earth, right? Yeah. And then now suddenly, eight years, eight years. And was it eight? Back. Yeah, eight years. Jeez. Holy crap! So, so yeah. now it's back on PlayStation Four, front and center. Started the press conference. Uh, would you say that this was a good move from Sony? Uh, it's got a huge fan base. What were, you, were we describing in the crowd you were seeing? What? Is this? Apparently some dude was crying. <laughs> <laughs> like, seriously? There is no game on this planet that's going to make me cry <laughs> when I see it. Like, that's some serious fan fandom right there. Yeah, right? that's 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 crazy. So, I mean, if everybody has that sort of passion for it, I think they'll, it'll do pretty well. So, yeah. I don't know what they were doing for it. I guess, like, I was reading the reports that they... Uh, Animating every feather on it. Basically, uh, they had to revamp it for the PS4 engine because they said it wouldn't be <laughs> wouldn't be the way it needed to be until uh, it wouldn't have uh, hair particles. So, would you say this is Chihuahua Bird, the game? Yes, yes. I mean, I don't, I don't know. I mean, it's a they got like a lot of stuff going on, like physics and a lot of the puzzles are all physics driven and stuff. So, I can see that taking a long time because physics is too unpredictable. T- taking eight years long. Yeah. Too- yeah, yeah, if yeah. you're trying to be ambitious about it, I mean, obviously, you only have to worry about two characters and the world, but the stuff that they're trying to do, like, with it, and you had the bird and the dude walking on stuff, and, you know, you got these physics puzzles and stuff like that, like, that, that could easily go wrong really quick as soon as you start throwing physics in there, so it's kind of crazy. Yeah. I don't know. I'm I'm interested to see it. I you know I wouldn't cry over something like this, but oh oh and the slow oh my god oh, oh yeah. is he gonna make it? I don't think he's gonna make it. Oh <laughs> oh yeah. there you go. Clothes shirt physics. Yep. So that's win. all physics though. Yeah. Oh that's and then the feathers and stuff. All that that erratic movement. That's yeah. you know feathers colliding with each other. Yeah, it's crazy. Craziness. Well, I think that Sony definitely wanted to start their show off with a bang, and I, th- I think you know the hype was real for something like this, and they finally delivered it. So, did they? Is it a ship date for this? Uh, I think they said 2016. 
And they didn't give like a firm date, but they said 2016. Uh, okay, well, the hype is not real until it's actually real. So. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, we'll could, see. I mean, it, it could, could fall another, off again. Another eight years. Yeah, to finish it could it fall off. off again. So later in the show, they did uh, Shinmu 3. So th- I thought this was kind of strange, right? They promoted a Kickstarter for a game in their press conference. Like, Right. Yeah, it was really even, weird. Is that? Well, isn't it kind of weird? Yeah, like, it's really, really it's where it's going, man. It's where it's going. It's well, where it's, it's going. It's a, it's a guaranteed way to figure out what a market is. Yeah. So if you, I mean, it doesn't cost them anything. Mm-hmm. If they put it out there and people give to it, then great. Then okay, now you get like two, three million dollars right off the bat to help with the development costs, and then Sony's like, all right, well, we'll kick in whatever the rest is. And it's just free publicity too. So right. it's a good move. It's kind of cheese ball as far as like, you know, you're taking you're taking advantage of what Kickstarter is and like, kind of Kickstarter is normally like for people who are like trying. Yeah, to I mean, this is a like huge company kind of thing. saying, "Hey, can you give these yeah. guys money?" Where you you know, that, yeah. For me, that seems like the optics of it are yeah. kind of kind of you know. Wonky. Yeah, but the people who care about the game don't care. Yeah, like, they just want sure. they want they just want the game. Back. I mean, the thing yeah. is, is that you know, as, as developers, we we know that if they're at that that conference or something, they already signed a contract. They're already yeah. under contract. Oh yeah, that's, yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. So it's it's like all the all the Kickstarter thing is doing is is giving uh, the people who aren't so it's it's filtering out to the non non fanboys, right? Yeah. So and, and giving it a chance. And probably what they're doing is getting their marketing budget off of that, you know, like some of their marketing money and, and all that stuff. So but you know, if they're sitting there in the developer conference and aren't represented, they're they're not sitting there waiting like, Hey, our Kickstarter got a dollar. They're already done. They're already have yeah, the the deal's been signed. Well, so. I don't really have any... I, I mean, I, I can respect the franchise. I think I remember playing it back on the Dream... Was it Dreamcast? I think it was originally yeah, on or yeah. something. It never really resonated with me. So, you know, more power to them if they can get it figured out and they can actually do it. But then again, how long do you think that this is going to take to actually release? Yeah, I don't know. No, I mean, what? I don't know. The first one cost them $70 million, right? That's what, that's that's what they say? Yeah, that's what they said. That, that's actually million. like... Uh, Shijia in the chat actually said that they would need around eighty million U.S. dollars as a budget for this game. Yeah, eighty mil for a walking yeah, simulator. I, don't know. I heard it was like a walking simulator. Oh, there's some running there. Yeah. So maybe it's not a walking. Well, I mean, simulator. this is probably just like a proof of concept, right? Or it's just like yeah. yeah, yeah. What, yeah. I mean, what's the game it's about? Does anybody sense. know what the game's about? <laughs> I don't know. What it no, is. I mean, it's about the is it like or something like that. They're chasing down that guy that killed his father. Killed his father. Oh, spoiler. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Oh. Oh, all right. This should. I think they'll. It'll do well once. Because you know, you yeah, know I mean, got the was, there, was anybody crying in that? I think no. people did cry. Oh. I, I, I think yeah. people did cry so much. Wow, emotion. There's, there's a lot of emotion at Sony yeah, press, conference. press conference. So let's go to Xbox. But yeah, so I so Xbox showed gears. They they did a couple of things, um, but I think this is one of the biggest takeaways was the the announced backwards compatibility uh, with three sixty stuff. Late for that, I mean, they, like yeah. who cares, dude. Okay. And then they, they, if they would announce that like the first, yeah, right, right, right. Yeah. yeah, at launch. And then they reduced. Yeah. They, then they reduced the price just recently for like fifty bucks or something like that. But they didn't. I don't think they spoke to it at this. Yeah, they, they, just, well, like, right before the yeah, yeah, retailer, right? right? No, right at right right before E three, they dropped it like fifty bucks or something like that. I think. Uh, I'm, I, I think I saw it somewhere. But I mean, who cares? Like yeah, anybody, like most who, of the people have sold their games. Yeah, exactly. GameStop. Whoever's got an Xbox three hundred and sixty and is not. Going to Xbox One, it's not going to the Xbox Box One because they can, yeah, to yeah, play like 360, 360 games. They're like, going because they want to play Xbox One. Yeah, games. exactly. It, like, nobody cares. It only capitalizes on the nostalgia, right? Like, for it only capitalizes on people who already have a 360. No, who have both, basically. <laughs> like, I've got a 360 yeah, yeah. and an Xbox One, but I don't want to keep them both plugged up. Now I can only, I only need to plug up one. Yeah, people in the chat okay. like a Mozzie designer is saying I sold all my games. Exactly, that's what exactly. those people that's what are saying. If you're gonna upgrade, if you're gonna be one of the early adopters or one of the adopters, period, you've already gotten rid of your Xbox 360 stuff. I, I wonder what the sales would have been of the Xbox One if they would have put this in place, you know, when they launched. Yeah, because you know, the, I mean, the problem is the world will never know. It's because right. they're way yeah. too late to the game. They're That's losing right. so bad to. Somebody. And what does Phil have under that jacket? What is that T-shirt? Uh, it's a rare. It's a rare logo. Oh, it's a rare. It logo? says rare. Yeah, because yeah, later they sort of like, oh, rare. We're doing all this stuff. Oh, rare, all these okay. rare games, yeah. and then he like unzips it. I, I just didn't know if he was just cold oh, or just. Oh, it's kind of nippy. I think he's getting under battle toads. Um, yeah, like he did that one year with the battle toads. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I, I didn't. There was nothing really super memorable for me out of the the Microsoft press conference. I think 
you know. They lost so bad this round. So I guess this is a good point. Let's well, yeah, gears. I mean, it was gears. Let's they go. Let's gears. go to two, Tyler. So, Tramel, what was your? I want to get what your favorite part of E3 was. Whether it was a moment, a trailer, um, you know, something. What What was your one takeaway that you enjoyed? Well, finding out more about Fallout Four was uh, very, yeah. very interesting. And I'm glad that they did the things that they're doing with it. You know, I'm, I'm looking. I'm actually really looking forward to it now. I was gonna. I'm just gonna pick it up anyway, so it didn't really matter. But now I, I see that they're trying to do. Uh, they're trying to expand it a lot more. They, you know, obviously tightened up the the combat system and did a bunch of other things like that. So, you know, I think they're gonna be on track to be doing some really serious numbers with Fallout Four. Like, that's gonna be I was I was blown yeah. away that they were like, okay, and it comes out in November. Like, yeah. yeah. Well, like, not, we knew it was coming out. I mean, it's been yeah, since well, what 2008 since the last. Yeah, time they, they could did have something. easily said 2016. But that's the cool. fact that they they got all the stuff that they put in there, they got the um, you know the base building stuff. They crafting. got all the crafting. They got all the customization yeah, stuff. stuff they got Fallout Shelter, which is yeah. crazy. I think everybody here fun. is really enjoying it. Um, and you know that'll be coming out on Android pretty soon too, which will you know stop me from stealing my wife's iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, and calling you when you have a baby. Exactly, like that. Just getting the reports, <laughs> <and telling laughs> those what's notifications. Going on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but they did a really good job with with all of that, like all the connection, like connecting everything together and putting it all together in one good package. I think Fallout Four was probably. Are you going to get the Pip Boy? You going to get the Pip Boy? I'm getting phone? the special edition. I'm gonna get it. Last time I got a special edition uh, game, I got burned on it. Which one was it? Batman? Nah, dude. No. It was, uh, that one didn't even... Oh, it was Splinter Cell. Oh, Blacklist. dude. Is that bomber? So yeah, that dude. Remote control bomber. I was like, oh, man, I'm going to get the bomber. Then I got the bomber. And then I was like, I, was just, I left it in the it's box. It's crap cakes. And then I played the game, and the game was shit balls. And I was like, man... So I got the special edition in the lunchbox of Fallout. 3. Yeah, 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 yeah. With the dumb, with the little bobblehead. Yeah, yeah, that was cool. But then they had like the Pip Boy edition. And you can get through Amazon and stuff like that. And that was that thing was a piece of crap. Yeah. yeah. So it looks like they're going to try to do it right this time. Yeah, and yeah. I think they've acknowledged that you know yeah, it wasn't up to snuff. So I, I you know, I'm, I'm curious to see if anybody will, like wear it around the office for more than like one minute. I'm not wearing it. I doubt if I even <laughs> put it, take it out the box. Yeah. Like, whatever. It's so much, come and get it just because. Well, I was actually. You'll see a little bit later in the in the real uh, Tyler put together of the footage I was sending back uh, while I was at E3. But I was at the the, the uh, Bethesda press conference, and I think they did a really really great job. Uh, being their first time that they did a pre- like a little press conference, it was super solid. Yeah. They kept it tight. They, they got a, they got a nice slew of games. No, I, you know, it was really good. Any other publisher out there? Right yeah, now. yeah, for sure. Like so, like it seems it seems weird because you have like the the Xbox and the PlayStation uh, press conferences. They showcase all these games, and then like you have Activision or whoever else oh, yeah. do these other. You know, like Ubisoft. They they did theirs. But half the games that they showcased were already showcased on the Sony and the, yeah. and the Xbox platform. So it's this is rehashing. Yeah, so they're just kind of rehashing the stuff. Or showing new footage and yeah. everything, too. Yeah, so uh, Motari and TV is saying that the, the Pit Boy edition is sold out, like, worldwide. Like, that's that's crazy. Already? Yeah. That's bullshit, dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so you were going to get it, right? I was going to get it. They'll probably, they'll probably do more. I don't know. My lunchbox sits in my closet with the with the bobblehead in it. So yeah, it's just more that's shit the to problem, collect, you know? Because I, I still got so much shit from Fallout 1 I have a Fallout closet 2. of special I, editions. Like basically, the, it's like the closet that, you know, like all the stuff falls out of. Yeah. Like push yeah, it back, push in back in. Because, yeah. Yeah. I've got it's POP boxes from Fallout 2. Oh, like nice. like the kind that shit sits up in fucking GameStop or whatever. They the old whatever. school one. Yeah, like the big ass boxes. I still got those sitting around. The house. So what, what are you going to do with those? Are you gonna Nothing. They'll just sit around, and collect dust or whatever. So mm-hmm. This is a good segue. So uh, Darking from chat asks, "What was your thoughts on new IPs?" And I'll just jump in super quick. I thought Horizon uh, was super, super, super impressive, and that was Gorilla's new IP. Was it? Yeah, the, the gor- I, I was kind of confused was, uh, with that one. It looked oh, really I nice. Thought- but I didn't really know what was going on. But that's good. That's good that you're asking qu- like those. I'm questions, not asking right? questions though. I'm, I'm just confused. Okay. Okay. But that's what I'm like, saying. How I'm do like, they? How do the robots like multiply? And like, but see man. that to me that's intriguing, right? Like it doesn't confuse me. I'm like, okay. Well, I want a little I'm, bit more. I really want to know. I don't stuff. know what the purpose of the game is. Yeah. 
Well, is it should, a dinosaur should. hunting sim or something? I don't know. I mean, what's the I, what's the overarching thing that you got to do? Like, why are you? It looks like a third guard? person kind of like action, like Assassin's Creed or. Um, yeah, but in Assassin's Raider, Creed, when you see a demo of that, you you know you got an objective to like go from point A to point no, B. No, she was trying to get those little canisters. Like, what are those canisters? Like, what okay, yeah, do, what do you, you know? do with those? I don't know. Is she just collecting stuff? I don't know. It's just blowing shit up. Yeah, I guess. I don't, I don't know. know. For me, that was that was really impressive, and you know, it, it's great to see people working. Is on it a new open IP. world? I don't know. Man, see, that's what I'm saying. I don't. You don't. You didn't give me enough information well, to make a decision. It's to me, it looks like a, a campaign trailer kind of thing. To me, it intrigues me. So, but for so, you, you get you, are, you so sir, I'm or intrigued. a detective. You want to detect? Right. Yeah, I want, to, I want to go in. There I want information you know. to be given to me so that I can make an informed decision on my purchasing. You know what my what? my IP new IP is? Yeah. What is it? Yarny. What's that? What's that? What the hell is a Yarny? Yarny? You know, this, okay, okay, uh, fan base out there, what's Yarny? Nobody it's knows what Yarny in. Is. Was that at E3? Yeah, it was at E3. Well, who There's makes all it? sorts of fan stuff coming out of who it. Who makes it? It's by, um, look it up. Uh, I forget who the name of it is, but it's the new Sackboy. Oh, the, the, the Unraveled. Un- yeah, Unraveled. Unraveled. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Unraveled is the game. Y- Yarny. Oh, well, Yarny, Okay. Yeah, I didn't. I, didn't I, just, I glazed over that. Yeah, people are saying the indie game unraveled. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah there you go. No, I mean it's it, it's great. Yarny was the character, so yeah. yeah. No, I mean I think it's good that we see new stuff coming out of people, right? We're not I thought, just it, was, I thought it was shit. pretty clever. I thought it was. Uh, I know, didn't see the, the video. I just remember somebody mentioned it unraveled. Luvari is like the nervous guy on stage. <laughs> <laughs> he was pacing. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> But no, yeah, I, look I, it up. It's pretty cool. Rainbow Six Siege. I mean, we've seen it a, a bunch of times, so they didn't really reveal anything new. But I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, C Mac Tarmac is saying uh, Ubisoft's new IP. I guess is the open, the, the open world Ghost the Recon. Space thing? I guess no, no, no. The, oh yeah, yeah, the open world yeah, Ghost Recon. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah that's I'm, pretty I'm, good. Yeah, I'm not really excited about that. I want I want Siege and I want to play Division, but. Mm-hmm. You, you know, know when that's going to come yeah, out. Yeah, exactly. It's you know, that could be another eight years. It's been too long. You know, that could be another last, last like, Guardian. Same as Siege, though. Siege is, oh, yeah, like, yeah. started and stopped. Started at first, it was Rainbow Six. I don't Rays. think they have enough people at Ubisoft Three. working on that. So Three. I think they need to throw in there a couple thousand at it yeah. and they'll get it out right people. away. Yeah. Uh, so Dan Milt is saying uh, Cuphead looks amazing. And there's a lot of people who said a lot about Cuphead. Yeah, I saw, yeah. What? That was it's like, cartoony like the, like the side-scroller that is, yeah. uh, looks like the old vintage cartoons. Yeah, and stuff that like that. I didn't see that one. Yeah. Dude, where have you been? You've just been... I just you've, watched you've the ones that I watched. Vault dwellers all time. Hey, I'm trying to keep my vault dwellers alive, <laughs> man. I got, I got ten dudes left. They're hanging <laughs> on by a thread. It's hard in the wasteland. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and take a look at a video. Tramel, we recorded this uh, I think like two weeks ago. This is before we moved into our new space upstairs. We did a walk through. Um, if you're gonna grab a drink, now's the time to do it because it's like seven minutes long. Why but is it's, it so long? Well, because it's a whole walk through of the upstairs. It's got you laying it's down like in the kitchen, our space, basically. going outside. So yeah, let's take a look, and then when we come back, we'll have uh, somebody else new here to give their uh, E3 impressions. So. All right. What is going on? Hey, what are you doing, dude? Taking want, video. You want me to give you a tour, dude? Yeah, let's do it. All right. This is obviously the chip wall room. When somebody was in. Planking away with knives or maybe, whatnot. Maybe there was like a crime investigation scene in here. And this it is what they might used. have been, dude. Somebody tried to fill up the hole and, you know, did a <laughs> shit job on it. And so that's that. And of course, we got the natural stone. I'm assuming that this, according to what Milky was saying, that this was actually the end of the original building and they added on to the building right here so that's all like old school 1800s type shit so this is our this is our new space this is yeah. where boss keys expanding mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We, we got a little tight downstairs so we had to come on up so this space you might recognize is exactly the same space as the one downstairs so below this is where my desk is so if i just cut a hole in the ground you'll drop right through right my desk <laughs> 
Just cut a hole, it's just like a fireman pole. Whoop. Then I could go both up and down, bam. But this will open up to the open area downstairs, which is awesome. And then this would be the extremely dark room downstairs, except they've got actually a door cut in here, a giant 12 foot hole cut in there, which is pretty cool. Lots of more light coming in there. And then this door is open. Downstairs is always close with Brandon's desk right in front of her. And then, of course, in front of Brandon's desk, he's got a Ooh. bathroom at the moment. And then over here, which is really cool, we got showers. Oh, That's yeah. That's going to be awesome. A necessity for Raleigh Summers. Man. Especially for David Rose, because he comes in running and shit. And he's all sweaty and stank, but then he just sits like five feet from me. <laughs> so he messes that up. And here's, uh, I don't know whose room this is now. I think oh. this is going to be the new tech room. I think. But then they have their own personal dead body share. Oh, you this shove. is where you throw the, the, yeah. bad, the bad interns? You can shove all the dead bodies out. And all the dead oh people God. in there. Man, it's hot. That's a, that's a four story drop, too. Jeez. <laughs> Look at that. It's crazy. Crazy stuff. So, all right. that's that. And then we come through here. We got AJ <laughs> in there, right there. So, this is uh, another bathroom. This is the master suite. Is this staying a bathroom though? I don't know. I guess so. Oh, okay. I don't see nobody working in here. No. no. This is my personal bathroom. Oh, this, this, is, the, this is the executive bathroom. We'll put a desk in here. I think we can't have enough room for a desk. Hey. You know, if you if you do really bad, then you got to be. You got the desk in here. Yeah. <laughs> this is a nice room. Hey, you nice see, nice you your house. Nice uh, bathroom. It's pretty cool. Double door. This is gonna be problematic though. See, look at this. You come right here and you're like, oh. oh. Yeah. I'm gonna go ahead. There's no lock. Look at that. Oh, that's gonna be a problem. You're gonna be in here, washing up, bowls out. Oh my god! Somebody's gonna see you, all your parts. And then there's no lock on this one either. Look at that. This is not safe at all. So, this is gonna have to change in some way. And I think. Is it? No, this. Either one of these rooms is audio. Is this audio's room? No, yeah, I think that's, audio. that's audio's. Oh, it's bathroom. This is audio. That's a bathroom. What are you going to do with this door? Hey, let's tell you this lock that shut permanently. Oh, like shut bar. Oh, uh, that's yeah. smart. Do what we can. Uh, Collateral damage. Yeah, yeah. Double, double whammy, dude. Yeah, double whammy. Thank you, John. Long yeah. chance. All right, and then up here, I believe Jay Hawkins and Chris Wells will be in this space. So the art team's moving up here from downstairs. Part, part of the art team, yeah. Part of the art team. Uh, most environment, the environment guys, uh, character guys, and I think uh, the animators just stand downstairs. So, this space, I think, is... Ooh, this light is bad. I'm going to pull Lee, I think it's Lee. There we go. I don't know who's going in here. I forget. Anyway, this is my lovely office. With my good friend Chris Milky. Oh, and you guys already painted. No, no, no. <laughs> this is not Stan. Trust me. I will I refuse to work in this room this color as is. So hopefully it'll be some neutral tan color with my one red wall that I've requested because I'm a diva like that. And uh, then you know me and Milky get down and then I guess this is uh Johnny Long's office. Storage. Yeah, so basically storage. Put them behind the door. And then this is Sarah's office, well, which cool. is pretty much like some dank corner. I just feel sorry for her. She's got an all little rabbit hole over there. And, you know, bricks going through and such. Very nice. And then I forget whose office this is. Uh, I think this might be environment. So, Eric and uh, Josh, and maybe me, or big Lee's out there. No, no. And then that's, oh yeah, we, got we didn't even get main, the big yeah. main room. These are obviously the steps that go down. So yeah, these the, steps go down. To the old busted area. Oh, okay. That that's how it's gonna be. This old, old dirty, old dirty basement. 
And then we come through here, which is a very lovely open area. Dude, look at this like 20 foot ceiling, dude. Look at that. And this is the new meeting that area. View is, yeah, this new meeting area where we do the Friday night fights and all that jazz. That's and this, is, dude, oh man, let's open this up. Hey, let's open this up. Ugh. Woo, hot. Yeah, this lovely view of rooftops and such. Look out there. Hey, baby, what's up? You get to see the, the ladies walk by and stuff. Nice. Um, we have a lovely view of the Wells Fargo building. Gorgeous. And the back of the AT&T building. And some trees off in the distance. It's really hot out here. Yeah, it's, 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 it's really toasty, freaking hot. So. so that's the one for our... Oh, and this is where you make the ice cream. Oh, yeah. This is going to be... Uh, the one problem with this is that the sun in the evening... So you can see the sun's up there. It comes right down this way. So right around three, four o'clock, this whole place is gonna be lit up like fireworks. And we've got the lovely countertops. Oh yeah, look at that. Countertops. Matt Fishman, oh, everybody. Yeah. Okay, I think we're it's done here. Go. I think we're it's done like, if you're just gonna be you doing get this. Sleepy at night when we're doing like really crunchy crunch time, you just be like, uh and Arya comes in, and he's like, oh, everybody's been working really hard. It should all get raises. <laughs> and, um, so then we get the full-on kitchen. I'm going to be burning some here, and then we'll be taking this out immediately. And we got double ovens and a nice refrigerator that's big enough for everybody to put their, whoa. Oh, what, is there some stuff in there? and drinks in oh. here. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome, boss key. All right, Tramel. Thank you. Any any last words? No, man. It's going to be all good. Wednesday, I'm moving. It's all up here. And then Cliff and Oriana are downstairs. So this is fucking Lord of the Flies up here, baby. I'm running this shit. Milky's, I'm going to just run him over. He ain't got shit. He's got nothing. It's all about me, baby. He's got nothing. Only Tramel can, like, Carry that for six to nine minutes. It carries everything. Yeah, if it were any longer than that. Oh, we didn't get. The, okay, we didn't see. We gotta swap. Let's do it. Let's, oh, no. You guys want to do a hot swap? <sighs> All right, man. Hot, hot swap. Is this hotswap.com? Probably do not go there. That's probably a bad idea. Probably really bad. We're gonna, we're gonna do a hot swap. Oh, man, dude. Was, yeah, that was short. There we go. Cool. There we Technical go. difficulties solved. So. Chris, you've been on the show before, and Aaron, you've been on the show. Before. I have. Cool. I'm a returning champion. All right. Oh, every. Oh, okay. That's that's uh, that's John. He's saying OMG sweet seat swap. Hello, John. And then he's saying Lord of the Flies. Yeah. Anyways. Yeah. Oh, I see the stick. We need the. What's that? Huh? Lord okay. of the Flies. So, yeah, guys, I'm just uh, trying to get different people on. I want to get everybody's impressions of E3. So we'll just get right into it. Uh, Chris, what was your favorite thing from E3? Man, this is probably one of the coolest E3s I've seen. I was like climbing up on my couch and screaming like a nine-year-old during that Final Fantasy VII reveal. That was pretty pretty uh, yeah, That was pretty jacked. Yes, Sony dropped some bombs. And uh, that, that Dark Souls 3 um, booth, awesome looking, dude. Wow. Yeah, it was just like Sony did like bomb after bomb after bomb. It was just like yep. boom, 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 boom. We're dominating right now. Aaron, what about you? Uh, I'd have to say my favorite thing was Titanfall 2. It was, I mean, just like the, 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 ability, the ability for like you and your friends to like, get together and, and form into one giant titan. And like one controls you the movement. You really want this to happen, don't it's, you? It was pretty sick. And uh, you want to respawn. You guys haven't seen it. Yeah, Megazords, please. If you, yeah, Megazords were, uh, it, was, it was out of this world. That was probably my favorite part. Seriously. Though. I was, uh, I'm pretty jacked about XCOM 2. Oh, cool. Yeah. Um, I was a really big fan of that. I like anything that's brutally hard, and I played through the first one, like on the Iron Man or Impossible, whatever, yeah. where you're kind of screwed. Did you play the fan mod that like made it even more difficult? No, I didn't know it, it got harder. Oh, okay. it was pretty. It was pretty hard. I see you maybe revisiting XCOM in your near future. Possibly. I'll send you a link. I so, was ho I was hoping that Sony would announce that you could finally change your PSN ID, but 
I guess that's never. Your <laughs> expectations for E3 are <laughs> slightly I guess skewed a little for different. everybody else. Ooh, the most exciting part. Let me change my name. I want to change my name. My, <laughs> my high school tag. Yeah. Last Guardian, Horizon, <laughs> Final Fantasy uh, VII Remake. Yeah. You just want to change your PS. The, the Final Fantasy VII was pretty awesome, but I assume that's still like five five years uh, yeah, out I mean, before. Like, knows, we don't know. Right? They probably spent the past year just making that trailer, yeah. right? And then it's just like, all right, well. It's got to be so hard to remaster something that's such a classic and remember it well I mean I don't yeah, know I, but I don't even know what they're like are they gonna just do or are they just going to do the exact same story they gonna, like it's, I don't know it's gonna be interesting cause like uh, they've been interviewing Nomura a bunch and he's saying like hey we're gonna work on this stuff like don't worry about it like we're gonna have all like those classic scenes that you want like uh the cloud cross-dressing scene in HD. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's going <be, laughs> to be hilarious. Honey be in, man. Uh, it's yeah. going to be they said, interesting. Didn't they, that they had actually been working on it ever since the uh, the PC port, and they just didn't know like the right time to announce it. So it might have been in production for a little bit. Otherwise, yeah, we'll be all like old and decrepit by the time it comes out. Yeah, who knows? I believe. You believe? I okay, believe. so we know what you guys liked. What would you say was the worst part of E3? Just, I think this is always an interesting perspective to get. No Titanfall 2 and no PSN <laughs> name change. Uh, I liked most of the games that they showed. Uh, some of them I don't understand the hype behind, but I guess that's the game business. Some people like certain things. But I think the, like the Ubisoft, I think it was Ubisoft's press conference in general, I thought it was a little, it seemed kind of weird and like trying a little bit too hard to be funny or a awkward kind of yeah i felt awkward watching it but <laughs> the games some of the games they announced were pretty cool so yep. i think that was probably what was weird for me is people always sometimes they just try people try too hard and it, mm. like you were, you were talking about earlier like people can sense that and it just comes off weird and like, what about you chris <clears throat> um there wasn't anything that i just didn't like i um i guess i was kind of bummed out by the nintendo one i was hoping we yeah, 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 yeah. i think really a lot of people were um, yeah, I forgot about that. I, I mean, I turned off the EA one once they went into the sports thing for like an hour. Um, I was actually like joking about FIFA, and Dan was like, hey, hey, <laughs> calm down over there. <laughs> it was funny. Some people were saying it's like EA should just do a separate press conference that's just for their sports. Yeah, event. EA sports division. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. but No, of course yeah. not. It's just not my type of game, and it's like, you know, there's a lot of cool stuff coming out of EA, <laughs> so I want to like see that, but they're like, all right, we have to make everyone sit through like all our sports games first. So our IT manager, uh, Lucy, in uh, 919 in chat says Moon Man oh the Square, Square Enix Moon Man yep that was terrifying because all of a sudden <laughs> yeah. like my Twitter it made was no just sense. lit up it's like and that's the meme I wanted he was the that's star it. of the show they had to do something because Sony already uh, released the Final Fantasy news so what was Square going to do uh, I yeah guess, Square like, came out with like everything that yeah. like, they blew it all with all the other they things they held on to then, Kingdom Hearts like, they showed uh, that yeah, off yeah, yeah. it looks cool finally yeah. like see some gameplay I'm excited about Kingdom Hearts cool well anything else guys it's Want to just get your thoughts? Titanfall uh, 2. Is it? Oh, yes, goodness. I know. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited for like all the strong showing out of the VR stuff as well. I'm glad. No, I, I, was actually, yeah, yeah. I was I was disappointed Sony didn't show off Morpheus stuff. I was really mm -hmm. kind of hoping for that. Was it playable on the floor at least? What was? Uh, the Sony Morpheus stuff. Yeah, they had it behind closed doors and that kind of stuff. Unfortunately. Yeah, the HoloLens. Like, it looks cool. It looks really neat. I can't yeah, wait to it. How much of that is smoke and mirrors? I mean, remember Connect? You know, back in the day, yeah. it was just like the, you can scan in a skateboard, right? Oh you know, yeah, yeah. How big was their uh, HoloLens camera rig to show that well, stuff on the stream? Yeah, but I don't know. Okay. So yeah, those are all good questions. I mean, E three is a time to you know dazzle everybody, but then you know what's the follow up on all of that stuff? Yeah, so. definitely. Cool. Well, guys, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Appreciate it. Let's. Uh, so I went to E three. It was super busy. I didn't really get to see a lot of stuff. It was just you know meetings and bouncing around. Yeah, and, that's how it is. So I I sent footage to Tyler uh, every single night. I tried to record as much as I could. Um, so I, it's we it's not really weird. It's just, just watching. <laughs> I mean, it can't get weirder it than it is. is. It'll, it'll be fine. It, it looks good. Nintendo Muppets, right? Yeah. Yeah. Those are awesome. <laughs>I just got here from the Atlanta. Where, where did I come from? Atlanta. Atlanta, New Mexico. Manlanta. Manlanta. <laughs> the home no. of a thousand and one mans. I think this is going to be the first thing in the video, so <laughs> that should be interesting. So this is uh, Bethesda's press conference. They're about to get into. Um, 
pretty, pretty, pretty uh, nice. Pretty crazy. Again, if you're going to go into event planning for video game stuff, be prepared because it's insane. It's insane. So I'm at the uh, the Bethesda after party, and they actually they did it right because they um, they have people walking around with In and Out burger trays. Not some stupid like finger food or crab cakes or something like that. In and Out burger, a double double. That's pretty great. Pretty great. So this is the front of the convention center. Uh, it's pretty pretty great to see downtown Los Angeles with the giant Fallout 4 piece of marketing. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. I just picked up my badge. Um, gonna get together with Cliff in a little bit uh, and do Greg Miller's show on uh, Game Spot? Question mark? Yeah, so Boss Key Productions. Uh, yeah, all right. Wish me luck. It's bright. Dark Souls 3 marketing. Pretty awesome. All right, I gotta get coffee. Two. All right, Megan. Thank you so much. Yeah. So Cliff is doing a uh, a live show real quick with part? Greg Miller uh, for kind of right. funny. There you go. Uh, there you go. He uh, came in hot. He came in real hot. You know, you it was close. Okay, so earlier I said that this was the weird. The Dark Souls 3 thing was kind of kind of weird. I take back everything I said because I was here uh, before they activated it, and this is what it is now. Uh, pretty awesome. It's just a, a fountain of black muck. It's pre pretty excellent. I take back everything I said. Yep. Yeah, Bethesda always has a pretty good booth. Um, at E3, it looks like they're showing Fallout behind closed doors. They have some curtains over there. Um, got Dishonored, um, but yeah, got a bunch of a bunch of different IPs. Um, I think they do a pretty good job of representing them. Sorry, the camera quality is so bad. I'm in the I'm in a dark corner, feverishly eating. Eating this food, we're uh, we're backstage at the PC gaming show, um, about an hour out. And at E3, you really you eat whatever you can get. You eat whatever ever comes through. So that's what I'm doing. So that's it. My E3 is over. Uh, I did my best to try to get as many moments as possible, but uh, you know sometimes stuff falls through the cracks. So we're going to talk more about uh, uh, my impressions and everybody's impressions from the studio and the live stream. So. I'm gonna toss to myself, which is kind of weird, but let's try it. Yeah, it, 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 it was it was hot. It got hot, and you you can't be doing the hat walking around. No, you can't be doing the hat. Did you get sunburned? Uh, I I think I got a little bit of color. What would you say? Mm -hmm. um, nope. Okay. All right. <laughs> nope. So now we got can't tell. <laughs> Joshua Parker with yeah. us. Josh, I know you have some big thoughts on E3. You were plugged in, yeah. the, you know, the whole time, yeah, and no, watch, uh, watch pretty much everything. Um, it was really exciting, man. Like I got, I, I normally don't get very excited about E3 in general, just because I don't know. I'm, maybe I'm a little bit jaded, but um, yeah, like uh, Recore was really good. I mean, it, it was really. I mean, I guess this is like the year of the dog. Like, so everybody's yeah, like putting yeah, like, yeah, some type of dog or pet in their thing, and I. I, I mean, I don't know whether it's going to be a game that's going to make me buy an Xbox One, but I resonate a lot with that. And then it seems like there's some interesting gameplay if you're going to be pulling out the orbs and putting them in other animals and stuff, you know, <laughs> Pokemon for uh, Xbox Xbox users. So, but, I mean, obviously, you know, Taken King, Destiny was... That's like, your jam, yeah, right? It, that's it, your jam right now. It kinda, it, for me, that was the biggest thing. Well, it wasn't the biggest thing I saw, but it was definitely the thing that... Um, it's very. It makes me really happy to watch Bungie like really grow that game in the way they're growing it, and they're doing a good job of making a really solid game for people that are into it. And they're going to make a game that eventually, you know, people are. It's going to pull other people either back or new people into it once they, um, you know, work out a lot of kinks in the game. So definitely excited about that. And 
you know, everybody decided about Final Fantasy VII Remake. I mean, you know, it's, yeah, it's, 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 it's VII Remake. So the Destiny thing was yeah, part of Sony's yeah. conference, too, yeah. right? I mean, Sony just crushed oh, yeah, it, crushed dude. It. Yeah, yeah, I mean, seeing, like... This is see, exclusive to 2016 or something like that, right? I, That's I, what Sony I don't know. Said. I mean, it's, it's, not, it's not exclusive, but there are, there are more, and I know you Xbox people out there, I understand your pain, but there are more, like, exclusive exotics. So there are exclusive exotics and stuff like that that are only going to oh. come out on the, on the PS4 and PS3. So, you know, the the Xbox 360 and Xbox One users, they're just now in September, they'll be able to get like six exotics that they weren't able to get, Hawkmoon and stuff like that. And now there's another set of exotics and of gear and everything that they can't get, and like the armor sets and everything. So, um, yeah, they're definitely pushing on um, Sony really hard and having like, I mean, the fact that Call of Duty didn't even show up to the 360 uh, thing or uh, Xbox thing. Xbox thing. Yeah, it's like, wow. I yeah. Mean, yeah. Yeah. So Mozzie Designer in chat is saying uh, that he thinks or she thinks that Sony or and Bethesda so he, both did an amazing job. Oh yeah. I mean, I, yeah. I was really happy for Bethesda in general, for, just from a developer perspective. Like knowing how dif- like knowing how difficult it is their first show, they did a great job. Like out of the gate, they did they showed some really good stuff, um, and I mean they nailed it. You know, they really nailed it. Yeah. yeah. So what? So it was the Taken King? Was that your? Favorite moment from E3? No, my or, favorite moment from E3 was definitely Final Fantasy VII. Yeah, like the way I, I, the way yeah. they showed it was like clearly as an old school like JRPG player. You know, I played every Final Fantasy game so far uh, in that game multiple times, uh, and just having that come back again is you know, I'm interested to see what these new generation of gamers are and how they're going to deal with like what FF7 is and like you know how that works. So. Definitely the moment, that one, for sure. So I thought you guys would be good to answer some of our, our user questions mm-hmm. and community sure. questions for this week. Sure, can try. All right, so let's just jump right into that. And we're going to be taking your questions from the chat as well. So please mm-hmm. ask us in the chat while we get to these. Mm-hmm. Um, so let's just go starting from Twitter. Um, so I am Jugal. Uh, asks, do you feel that showing cinematic trailers with no gameplay to back them up is a good thing or a bad thing at something like E3? Yeah, I know you. I know you've done this many times. You've got experience, you know, from behind the scenes. What would you say, Chris? I, I would say that uh, at E three, I mean, it, most people want to see gameplay. Most people want to see, you know, that, that's the biggest draw. They want to see how the game reacts, how that all works. Um, the most of the time when we were cutting trailers, uh, we would cut the trailer would be there, and then we'd have a roll of B roll what's called right. B-roll in the industry, mm-hmm. um, that we'd send like a minute or a minute and a half to the local, um, or your, 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 like a certain amount went to IGN, a certain amount went to GameStop, uh, Spot, and all that stuff. So the thing is, is that, you know, we had different people got different sorts of B-rolls to attract people to their sites. So, mm-hmm. but people want to see gameplay. I mean, that's, that's the biggest thing. Like cinematic trailers are awesome, but to sell the game and get people excited, they want to see you know, how it's going to look and feel and that sort of thing and compare it to the old, like a remake, compare it to the old one and all that stuff. Right. Cool. Yeah, I mean, I think, I agree. I think, I think gameplay uh, is always paramount and it's the most important thing for gamers to see this, how they can kind of latch on and they can start to dream about what the game's going to, you know, actually pull out when they have it in their hands. I think, but for newer IPs, I think that it's really good for them to actually have some type of cinematic opening because it kind of sets the stage of the world you're going to be in. But I feel like that, uh, you know, like I said before, you know, Recore is really cool, but they, it would have been awesome if they had a transition to some type of gameplay. Yeah. But that Horizon, uh, Zero Dawn, I love that. I love they, that. They yeah. did a great job. Like, they, they come in with a really strong cinematic and they transition right into gameplay. And so not only do you understand the world, but you also understand some of the things that you're going to be doing when you're playing the game. And I think that is, that's a paramount way, the best way. If, you, if you're going to show a trailer, do it that way. Versus like, you know, just something that is, you know, clearly like, you know, CG done and it's not, you know, maybe not be representative of the real game. The Batman Arkham Knight thing featured in the Sony press conference mm-hmm. too was like yeah. super, I mean, it was really, really disturbing, but it was really cool. Like, right. do you remember that? Yeah, 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 like, definitely. The, the the scarecrow, oh, yeah. like causing that guy to hallucinate mm-hmm. that cop and yeah. like shooting the people in the cafe. Yeah. It's like, fuck. And that was like all first person. Yeah. And yeah. You, that was playable. Yeah. Like, that was, that was crazy. And yeah. I, I thought that... That didn't really get talked about a lot, but mm-hmm. I, that left an impression on me. Yeah, definitely, it was definitely really interesting too. Like, I, I mean, it made me excited for that game even more than I already was. Yeah. <laughs> so let's go to the next question here, and I, I think the, these next two questions are actually we can loop them into one. Oh. Uh, so Darkwing seven three seven, and then C Mac Tarmac, who I think is actually in the chat right now. Um, they both kind of ask, what was the biggest surprise at this year's E3? What do you guys think had the, the best presentation and the biggest reveal? We kind of already touched on that. I would yeah. say Sony 
hands down. Yeah, they, they blew it out of the water. Um, them uh, really, really taking control and really also just seeing how many third party developers are really jumping on that Sony bad wagon and wanting to be a part of the uprise of the, at that is really, yeah. really crazy. So Black Ops 3 yeah. is going to have exclu like DLC timed exclusive. Like, yeah. The, that that used to be Microsoft's deal. Exactly, that's so, changed. So that's that's big. Um, it means that you know maybe maybe it's not enough to shift it, but what it really means for you know you competitive shooter players out there that a lot of competitive gamers are now going to end up you know showing up on PS4. We're going to have a lot of competitive shooter players on that console, which is not what normal people think. Most people, if you talk in different communities, everybody's like you know all the really good shooter players are all on all they're playing 360, they're all playing Xbox One. So but now. This generation could have a strong shift, so uh, definitely the Sony press conference was huge. Was a huge thing, and I have to follow that up with Bethesda. I thought for the first time, of course, they got that Zenimax money, you know, yeah. but for a first time uh, doing their own press conference, I thought it was fantastic. It was as long as it needed to be. They showed great stuff. Doom was awesome. Yeah, um, I think they were the best, you know, out of the gate. I mean, the thing yeah. was that was like the first thing of E3 was a pre E3. You know, bombshell that just went off and then just set yeah. the whole tone for yeah. E3. So that was, they did a really good job of doing that and getting that out there. And for their first time, I give, you know, kudos for them because, you know, Microsoft and Sony have been doing it many, many years, yeah. but they did it, they, out of the gate, did an awesome job. Yeah, I to totally agree. It's definitely good. They definitely set a precedent that people are going to have to follow up on it, the whole, like, you know, and you can download it so yeah. type so, thing. So, like, it, yeah, you know, that's, a, that's become a big theme in yeah. E3. Yeah, so easily baffled, that's actually a question that they asked from, from chat is, do you think we will see more games announced and released at the same time, like Earthbound Beginnings, yeah. which is something else, and Fallout Shelter? Yeah, I definitely think so. Yeah. I think it's one of those things where, especially when you want to endear yourself to your, your group of fans and also new yeah. fans, like, saying that something is there, because E3 is really all about, like, this, what 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 type of game is this? Is this a is this a now game? Is this a like a holiday game or is this like a you know a dream game for like you know Last Guardian is a great example of that we've been waiting for Last Guardian for forever and now it's finally maybe coming out and sometime soon. But to have a developer tell you that tonight you can go play this game yeah, that right. you think is like you know the fans are gonna they're gonna love you forever for that type of stuff. Yeah, absolutely. So let's go to the the our subreddit questions. Um, so. The Dark 1105 asks, can you talk a little bit about the role audio and sound design is going to take in the game? Uh, and then they list some examples. And what are your plans for game music? Thanks, it was cool seeing Cliff at the PC Gaming Show. So, I actually asked Mark uh, Mayland. There you go. Um, he, couldn't, he couldn't be on the show tonight, but I, I went and I asked him, and he actually wrote an email response to you, which I think is really cool. Um, he says... Our goal is to make a huge impact with audio. We are already in talks with some of the most well-known composers in the industry. As far as sound effects go, our goal is to make every object in the game have their own unique signature sound. Um, as an example, we want players to be, be able to identify weapons and characters off-screen uh, without seeing them. And that's something that RTS games, like yeah. Blizzard does really, really well if you play StarCraft, WarCraft. Right. Just through the audio, it's like, okay, great, that's a Hydralisk. Yeah. Great, you know, that's yeah. a Crypt Fiend. Right. You know, so I think doing that is... The, the right way to go. So I yeah. hope that answers your question. Yeah, definitely. Yep. Definitely agree. I mean, I think yeah, I think really any shooter in general, like having clear sound makes you understand what type of weapon that you're, that's coming around the corner and that make, that changes a lot about and how I, you approach the situation. I think a, a lot of FPS games don't have don't have that kind of nailed down. Yeah, like if I if I play a battlefield, like I don't really know what, like what that is. Yeah, I so. mean, you definitely should. I think, I think shooters can benefit from having that differentiation uh, a lot. And our sci-fi world makes it even easier oh, yeah. to oh, yeah, get some unique point. sounds yeah. that you know Mark can pick up on, and you know he's done like Ratchet and Clank and all that stuff. So we've got he's a good sound designer. You know he can take it to the next level. Yeah. So especially for Blue Streak. So uh, we've been listening to his sounds now, and it's, it's coming along really well. Yeah, hopefully you guys can hear some pretty soon. So, all right, let's go to the next question. Uh, and this is also from our Reddit. Um, oh, this is cool. This is a good one for you, Joshua. Um, Sorry, I'm straining to read this. Uh, AX Madka from our subreddit asks, will there be weapons capable of one shot, one kill? Uh, will weapons, also, will weapons be available to purchase like in CS? Um, as far as the, the first one, I can definitely speak really strongly to the first one. I think the situation for like um, one shot, one kill is, is really based upon what the trade-offs are for that weapon, right? Like it's, 
we're not we're we're trying to make a game that's all about you know player skill and what I like to call like gun skill between two players and having one player be able to win because they can they they have better gun skill in a the situation they 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 traverse the environment better they they and that, analyze the situation and they, and they approve themselves better in that scenario. So does that mean that a gun is going to one shot? Maybe, but maybe that person has to work a lot harder to get that one shot off. You know, maybe there's a long charge time on the gun. Maybe that, you know, those type of things are things that we're going to, mm -hmm. that we're going to balance towards, you know, that person has to have a lot of skill to actually pull that off. Um, but I would say that we want every fight between two players to be very rewarding and we're not going to give out, you know, cheap kills I would say you know you have a super powerful gun so you just because you point in somebody's direction they just die type thing we want to make sure that people are earning those kills I would say is the best way to put it yeah I agree I mean it's, it's those are weapons that are really really difficult to balance mm -hmm. out because uh, you know it's one of those things in a game that you know when someone pulls it out and uh, you obviously don't want to point at you so <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's hard it's hard yeah it's very difficult to have any really, uh, any really strong counterplay between those type of guns so and the second part of that, will weapons be available to purchase like in CS? I think, you know, things are still very early, but yeah. in playtests now, I mean, we have weapons that are just available. Right? The, yeah, I mean, yeah, you know, we have weapons that are just available, and I would say that the best answer to that is, is, you know, once we, you know, go to the magical alpha and, you know, we have people playing the game, it's going to be the community that's going to help support that decision on, yeah. how, on how we actually push that type of stuff out. You know, maybe it is, maybe it's not. It's whatever you guys want, whatever you guys feel is the strongest thing to compel you to come back and, um, and play this experience, you know, over and over again. So it'll yeah. be something that we, we decide as we go type thing because we're all about you guys. Yeah, so. it's, all, it's too early right now yeah. to, to yeah. tell about that sort of stuff. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, you know, trying to get the core loops down and making sure and then you know that determination will come later yep cool well um darkwing or, or sorry i'm sorry no Dark it's wing darking yeah darking darking He's uh asks with another question Rohan. <laughs> today i saw a bunch of articles on no man's sky uh what have you guys thought about that uh they got some big numbers in there i mean the planets and yeah. that sort of thing yeah, it's yeah. just like I think they're just making up numbers. I mean, I think they kind of, you know, approach the, you know, the uh, level of ridiculousness that, you know, um, but I mean, the whole thing is, is that we need a release date, guys. Release yeah. date. Yeah. So we need that um, uh, because they've been working on it a long time and we keep hearing all this stuff, but, you know, start the alpha, you know, you can, you can use our Twitter handles, send us some, you know, early <laughs> access codes, we'll help you test. That sort of thing. So Noki says he only really wants one number, or actually three numbers. Yeah. Uh, he, wants those, he wants that release date number is what he wants. Yeah. Um, from a programming perspective, uh, you know, I, I think it's really awesome. It's like two dudes working on that game. I think the fact that they've got is that most, it? Yeah, I think it's like a very small team. It's Maybe. very, very it's small. Very, very I think small it's team. too, but it's yeah. pretty small. It's like a small team working on that game. Um, I, if I remember correctly, their studio is flooded, and like, you know, they almost lost a lot of stuff going in. So like the fact that, you know, that they have where they are where they are uh, is really like you know last year's E3 was a very big thing because like, he got on stage and he was super emotional because he just, the fact that he was just there um, when they didn't think they were going to be there is really uh, it's enduring yeah. so I, I think for me uh, you know as far as that style of game it, that's not me that's not you know that's not my style of game but I know a lot of people that are into that type of stuff and you know Hopefully, for those people that, you know, it's going to be a game that they're really going to be able to sink their teeth into. At least is what they say. I mean, you know, yeah. billions of planets and billions of stars and all that stuff like that. I mean, I guess No Man's Sky is like the final game for some people. They'll never play it. It's like, you know, the next coming of Minecraft, I guess. You know, you no, they'll never play it again. You know, another game again, because that's all they need. So. I hope it's not like the mining in Mass Effect. I mean, uh, no, <laughs> like, oh you know, God, if, that, so if, that, if I had to mine all those planets, worst, I'm, not, worst I'm not doing games that. Ever created. <laughs> worst mini yeah, game ever. Yeah. Yeah. You know, oh if that's God. the game, then I, I, don't, I, don't, oh I don't think I'm going to play it. Yeah. All right. Well, that's a good, good place to wrap it up. So wrap it up. let's wrap, wrap it, up. it up. So, yeah. guys, everybody, thank you for watching. Um, you know, we're still really, really, everybody's working super hard behind the scenes. You have no idea. Um, yeah, it's just crazy. Uh, please follow us on all of the platforms below. Uh, go to Facebook and like us. You know, support. Hopefully, you want to support what yeah, we're doing. Please like us. Um, so, like us, follow us, all that kind of Two stuff. Thumbs up. Uh, we're gonna keep doing this. We're gonna keep doing live streams every two weeks and trying to give you guys as much as we can and weird videos, all that stuff. So, hope everybody had a great E3. We enjoyed watching it. Yep. And uh, yeah, we'll see you in a couple weeks. And that's it. Maybe Cliff will be back. Maybe he will be. Who knows? Who knows? 
or the mask.